All right, just want to do a real quick little video here to exhort you to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ, that uh, you would war a good warfare as we're told to do in the New Testament. Um, you can learn a lot from military things and strategy and whatever else. I'm not telling anybody to join the military because you're just going to serve the Vatican's purposes, uh, going out and with their crusades against Islam right now. But uh, what I'm trying to say is you can learn some things from historical battles and whatever else. And so I'm going to give you six different types of warfare and relate them to the Bible and to you as, your, as a Christian in your service to the Lord. Okay? Number one, you have a full frontal assault. All right, what is a full frontal assault? That is, you're not trying to sneak around or do anything covert or whatever else. There's the enemy. Here we are. Go get them. Not diversionary. Straight on full frontal assault. Coming right at them. Okay? Acts chapter 17. I'll show you a good example of this. In the book of Acts chapter 17. Verses 16 through 17. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. His spirit was stirred within him and he went out and he disputed with these people. Full frontal assault. He didn't try to come around or try to talk or just here I am. He came into the city and said, I'm seeing a lot of idolatry here. Okay, my spirit's stirred right now. And I'm going to, I can't keep my mouth shut, in other words. And you will get into those situations as a Christian. Uh, years and years ago, we had this, this uh, full gospel assembly cult building uh, across the road from our ministry office there in Bridgewater. And uh, they started doing this CCM rock concert. And I'm just sitting there, I'm working on my sermon notes, you know, everything's quiet and everything's quiet in the neighborhood. And all of a sudden it just, boom, you know, and the walls are shaking and the windows are rattling. And they were playing uh, the secular song, The House of the Rising Sun, a song about a brothel. And they're singing that with Christian lyrics. And, you know, I'm very familiar with the song from back in my lost days. And it just, I, at first I was just going, okay, what in the world is going on? They got some kind of concert or something, I guess. And... I thought, well, maybe I'll just let it go. And, and, and my spirit literally stirred within me. And I said, I can't let this go. And I went over and I confronted them. Walked right over. They stopped the music and I started preaching right to them. And I rebuked them. And a lot of the video, that's not all in the video, but some of it is on our secondary channel. You can see uh, you know, us rebuking them people very hard for it. I mean, they, they just brought it in. You know, Our little son Oliver, is, you know, he's very, very young. And he just started crying and screaming and... You know, I mean, it's terrible, terrible. So sometimes that's what you have to do. Sometimes you might be someplace or, or whatever, and you're going to see some sodomite pride rally or some, some kind of a thing, and your spirit's going to stir. And you better listen when your spirit stirs. When the Holy Spirit of God is in you and stirs and says, say something, please listen to that. Be obedient to the spirit stirring and saying, Go confront them. Don't go down and, you know, lay a tract into or something. Just walk right over to them and say, hey, I'm going to talk to you for a minute here. Good tactic of battle. Number two, this is kind of a little bit of a joke, but I thought I'd include it, an ambush. Okay? You go and you lay in wait, you know, and then you draw the enemy in. They come in. They're not expecting it, and you attack. You say, how could you do that as a Christian? What would be the way that that would work? Luke chapter 12, I would call it uh, ambush tracting, if you will. You put uh, gospel tracts in places or in things uh, that people would not be expecting it. And then this would be some verses that you could, you know, I'm kind of saying this somewhat in jest, but it's, you know, I thought it'd be fun to read these. Luke chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear and closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. <laughs> I'm sure we've had that happen a few times. Uh, we love to put gospel tracts or little gospel coins down into cases of beer. You know, we're doing it in secret, and they get home and, and they're opening it up and, duh, you know, what is this? 
Uh, there's other things that you can do. You, you know, dirty magazines up at the cash register, you know, the National Enquirer or whatever else. And you can go to them and you can put some gospel tracks in. Somebody comes home and, you know, they're going to read this filth and garbage about celebrity gossip and all this other stuff. And they open it up and, what is that? You know, <laughs> ambush tracking. All right. There's nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. <laughs> <laughs> they don't see it they go over they look at the case of beer and that's the same old brand i always get you know and they grab the case of beer and they're going home and they get it home and open up what you know great little tactic of warfare um number three a surgical sniper attack okay a sniper is someone that that uh, really studies their enemy well they're they're not going to just shoot 100 rounds in that general direction and hopefully one will hit and you know or something no 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 one shot one kill and in ministry there will be there's going to be times that the lord will have you uh expose a false prophet and the way you have to do that is you have to study that false prophet you have to look at what they're doing and what they're saying and catch them speaking heresy and then you nail them that way you say hey right there check this out uh, we've done that for years all right, uh, give me a, give you an example of that. Third John, chapter one. That's really my favorite chapter in Third John. Don't really like any other chapters in that book. Third John, verses nine through eleven. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth e good is of God, he, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. So he did a very good job there of saying exactly what this Diotrephes guy was doing. He explained where he's at and, and everything else. He named him by name. Paul did it with Alexander the coppersmith and a few other people, okay? There are some times that you need to just name somebody a false prophet and say, this guy's preaching a false gospel. He's saying things that are very wicked, and his channel is this, and he's, you know, and here's the video, and here's the timestamp, and here's the that, the, 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 the. Sometimes you need to do a real detailed attack. Sometimes that's there. Sometimes you can just look at somebody and say, well, you know, they're kind of mixed up. But hopefully they'll get straightened out or whatever. You can kind of come to them in love and whatever. But if you see somebody that's, that's a false prophet, and it's, it's not only that they're just proclaiming false things themselves, but they're actually trying to tear down legitimate ministries and legitimate preachers, sometimes a surgical strike is necessary. If you know what I mean. Okay? Number four, you have another battle tactic is cover fire. All right, cover fire is not intended to kill the enemy. Okay, you don't do cover fire to kill the enemy or to even hurt the enemy. All you're trying to do is just make them keep their heads down. All right, um, again, another tactic as a Christian. Uh, my attacks on Roman Catholicism are cover fire. I'm not trying to kill any Catholics with what I'm trying to say. And I realize very well that I am very much outnumbered by the Roman Catholics by the Roman Catholic Church, and I will never defeat the Roman Catholic Church because that's God's job. All I'm trying to do by just firing out these you know, videos against Roman Catholicism, it's cover fire so that the brethren online can continue to bring stuff out. I know how the little mind games get played with Catholics and Jesuits and things like, like that. The thing of infiltration and and all the other stuff that they do and whatever. And so I just bring out a lot of stuff against Roman Catholicism and uh, make them afraid to, you know, uh, really attack and show their Catholic leanings and things. And, you know, most of my enemies are Catholics. Some of them are just wing nuts that don't know the Bible and whatever else, but I do have a lot of Catholic enemies. But see, um, if they come out too strong in their Catholic beliefs and whatever else, well, then it kind of validates what I'm saying and, and the crazy kook that thinks the Catholics are behind everything all of a sudden starts to look pretty valid. So I do a lot of cover fire. I'll show you an example of that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. You know, you say, well, I don't know about all this soldier stuff. I don't know about, well, 
Have you read Ephesians chapter 6 where Paul likens Christians to uh, Roman soldiers? You can learn some things from military type history. I'm not saying to join the military or support the, the military or whatever because they're just serving the Vatican's agenda. And of course the military, the most loyal soldier, is still hated by their own military. Um, they're being exposed to depleted uranium as ammunition. Um, all kinds of biochemical weapons and they're being told, you know, don't worry about it, it's not going to hurt you, and, and it does. Uh, and they're, you know, um, you know, if they get, if they get uh, captured by the enemy, like in Vietnam, then they just leave them behind. You know, the prisoners of war, MIA, POW thing, over 2,000 soldiers left behind in Vietnam. And, um, and then, you know, if you make it through all of that stuff, well, you get to go live in a VA hospital when you get old and they just let you die essentially <laughs> good times uh, I'd stay away from the military but um, first Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 through 6 for yourselves brethren know how know our entrance in unto you that it was not in vain but even after that we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated as you know at Philippi we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention full frontal assault there but they're doing it they're coming in not expecting to take over the whole area they're doing a lot of cover fire you see, for our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time used we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness, nor of men sought we glory, neither of men, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. So they're coming in, and they're saying things are being very bold, they're not using a cloak of covetousness. In other words, we're not here to get your money kind of a deal. Um, they're there, and they are just in your face. Just a little example of that thing. Uh, sometimes it's a good idea just to, you don't even necessarily have to go, you know, do a surgical strike on a false prophet. Just keep coming out with videos on something that you know the false prophets are trying to get through. All right? You don't have to go after a video, in other words, you don't have to make a video exposing James White. Just come out with a bunch of videos attacking the new versions. Uh, you don't have to go after some of these free grace nuts. Uh, just make a bunch of videos on what salvation is and preach the gospel. You see? Cover fire. Next we have a rear guard action. I've talked about this before. A rear guard action is uh, you're retreating you're overwhelmed, your troops are overwhelmed, the enemy's coming in, there's no chance of you stopping the enemy, and you're just retreating, and all you're trying to do is, again, it's kind of a little bit of a cover fire type of thing, uh, you're just trying to keep the enemy at bay, is all you're trying to do. Um, we're not going to win, okay, in this dispensation. The church age ends in apostasy, all right, uh, there's going to be very few people that get called up. There's no mighty revival coming for the body of Christ or something, you know, Okay, um, we're not going to be the majority when we leave. All right, um, YouTube is is rapidly, the time is rapidly coming where there's going to be no Bible believers on there anymore. All right, um, they're going to shut us down eventually. So what are we doing? Well, we're just doing a rear guard action right now. We're trying to get the gospel to those few remaining people, trying to get the truth out to those few remaining people. That's what we're doing. First uh, Corinthians chapter four. First Corinthians chapter four, verses ten through thirteen. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless; being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the off-scouring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Paul's saying, hey, we're on the front lines of the battle. We're the ones getting shot at here. We're the ones getting attacked. And you people are sitting there just partaking of the teaching that we've taught you. That's what Paul's saying there to the Corinthians. And I've seen that thing myself many times. Uh, this ministry is on the front lines of the battle and I've attacked a lot of things and, and you know and you know we've we've been attacked quite a bit why well because this is the rear guard action here 
we're trying to keep the enemy at bay. I'm trying to keep Fox's Book of Martyrs type of a thing, martyrdom for Bible-believing Christians. I'm trying to keep that at bay as much as I can. I'm trying to push the Catholics back. I'm not going to defeat them. I know that. But I'm just trying to keep them pushed back and keep all these other heretics pushed back. It's all tactics of warfare. We are in a battle. And you got to remember that thing, brethren. Uh, you, you come out to a place like this and it's peaceful and it's beautiful and I can hear the crickets chirping and I can hear, you know, whatever birds singing and things. Uh, you kind of forget yourself sometimes and think, that's not so bad. It's not so bad. Uh, yes, it is. We are at war. And um, unlike other wars, there is no R&R. &R. Uh, you know, rest and relaxation there. You know, you, you, can't, you can't go and see your family for a little bit or, you know, whatever. whatever. There's no break in this, in this battle, in this warfare. Um, we are here. We are supposed to fight. And the fighting never ends until the Lord says, come up hither or until you drop dead. Uh, it's rough sometimes. And Lord will, you know, he'll, he'll give you some, some really fun times and really wonderful times down here. It's not all just a miserable time, you know, fighting and fighting and fighting. Uh, but you have to remember that we are at war. You start forgetting that, you're going to get killed on the battlefield. Finally, number six, the most powerful warfare tactic of all, is a airstrike. Calling in an airstrike. Second Timothy chapter 4. What the world are you talking about? No, well, I'll show you. Second Timothy chapter four. Can get there. Second Timothy chapter four, verses fourteen through fifteen. I mentioned this guy earlier. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works of whom be thou aware also for he hath greatly withstood our words what did he do um, Paul brought the man into judgment he brought a heretic a wicked man um, into a position of where God judges him it's no longer a thing of hey I got to deal with this guy hey I got to try to talk to him hey I got to go to him as a brother or whatever uh uh no Hey, this guy's wicked. This guy's evil. I pray for the Lord's wrath to fall upon him. Airstrike. <laughs> Boom. I've seen that thing in my ministry. There have been people, that's, it's not about, you know, oh, they, they don't like me and they've crossed me so I can pull man of God powers over them and, you know, and zap them or something. That's not what it's about. These people have no desire for repentance. They have no desire to change. They're wicked. They're false prophets. They've attacked this ministry, they attack me personally, they do all kinds of wicked things, and I just say, hey, Lord rebuke you. I'm calling it an airstrike. I'm not saying I'm going to come down there to your house and smash your teeth in. Uh, I'd like to sometimes, but, you know, that's not going to accomplish anything. Because uh, being little sissies that they are, they would just, you know, call the police on me or whatever else, but another story. It's not effective. I'm not supposed to be a striker. I'm not supposed to go down and be a brawler and beat people up. Um, it's more effective to let the Lord take vengeance, to call in an airstrike from Almighty God and say, okay, Lord, you take care of them. I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've done that thing. I've seen, I've seen some people fall apart. And when I see that there's no desire for repentance, they've, they've turned against the truth, they're just wicked, they're evil, they're lying. Okay, Lord, take care of them. And he will. He will. So, just a few things there, just a little uh, miniature little study here just to remind you. Because um, it's easy to forget, brethren. We are at war. Okay? We are at war. There's a fight. There's a battle going on. And unfortunately, sometimes you'll have a victory. And you think to yourself, oh, Good. I can take it easy now. I don't have to fight these no repentance people or no prayer people or or non-dispensational or post-tribbers or new versionists because I, I got a mighty victory and they regroup and they come back some other way <laughs> and you're just going oh man. I thought I was done with that fight I thought I was yeah nah. all right 
know. We're at war. You have to learn to fight. War a good warfare. How do you war a good warfare? By learning the tactics of the enemy. We're not ignorant of Satan's devices, the Bible says. You can't be. You have to realize there's no, no, no man's land. There's no, you know, time off. And say, okay, stop, stop attacking me, okay? I just want to preach the word of God. Stop attacking, you know, whatever. They're going to keep attacking. You just have to change your battle tactics occasionally. Just a little bit of an encouragement to you out there to fight. Fight while you still can. Okay? That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.